Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today we're talking about an incredible $2,200 blackout themed gaming PC you can build in CD Key Stash is a great place to get cheap Windows 10 and 11 keys. On this site, as you can see, you can get Windows for way less than its retail price. Click on the Windows version you want, go to checkout, and put in coupon code RUTEK for a discount. And payment is done through PayPal. Once ordered, the key will automatically be sent to your email immediately. What I particularly like about this site is it's trustworthy. The seller provides fast support if there are any issues during the activation process. Link will be in my description. As usual, the first part we're gonna take a look at is the motherboard, MSI Pro Z790P. This is a solid, future-proof motherboard that'll work great with our processor, the i7-13700KF. Intel's new 13th generation line is phenomenal, and this i7-13700K is no exception. To install it, make sure that golden triangle on the bottom left of the CPU is facing the bottom left of the motherboard. Gently place it into its socket, lower the bracket, and then lower the lever. Next up, we have the memory, and I chose G-Skills Ripjaw 5 Series 4x8GB of DDR4 3600MHz CL16 memory with no hesitation. I used this exact RAM in my last main PC, and it is some very reliable and fast memory. Now we'll install the storage. First, remove the M2 heatsink by loosening these two screws. Then get your Samsung 970 EVO SSD, 1TB or 2TB, whatever works best for you, and then gently push it into the M2 slot. To fasten it, you just need to push on this lever. Now we're going to put the heatsink back, but first we need to remove this sticker real quick so that our SSD can make proper contact. Now from the AIO box, you're going to find this bag. You're going to want to grab the bracket, remove those stickers, and then put it under the CPU. We're doing this now instead of later because it just makes things a little bit easier. Next up, also from the AIO box, you'll find these screws. You'll want to hand tighten them into that bracket we just installed. Now we can start putting things into the case, the Corsair 4000D. Before we put the motherboard into the case, we have to install the I.O. shield. You'll find this in the motherboard box. To install it, you kind of just apply even pressure until it clicks into place. Now we can lay the case on its side and install the motherboard. You'll know the motherboard is properly in place when it perfectly aligns with the I.O. shield. We still need to fasten it though, and to do that, we'll be using this type of screw. You can find it in the bag that came with the Corsair 4000D. Usually you use a different type of screw for the motherboard. This kind of confused me at first, but I guess that's how Corsair wanted to do it. Now we can get started on the power supply, the Deepcool PQ850M. This is a very high quality power supply, 80 plus gold certified, 850 watts, and it allows you to upgrade down the road. You'll only need to install the 24 pin power connector, two CPU power connectors, two PCIe connectors, and the SATA cable if you want to install a hard drive or a SATA powered device at some point. And don't worry, all the connectors are labeled, so you'll know exactly where to plug them in into the power supply. Now remove the back side panel from your Corsair 4000D and put in the power supply. Make sure the fan is facing the bottom of the case. And using the exact same screws we used to fasten the motherboard, we're going to use to fasten this power supply into place. Now this is totally optional, you could use the stock cables that came with the deep cool power supply, but if you want a little bit of an aesthetic flair, you can get these easy DIY black and gray power extenders. I went ahead and got them, I mean this PC is going to be my main computer for the next few years, so, you know, I gotta make it look pretty. Anyway, the CPU cable goes through this top right cutout, and then gets plugged into these connectors on the top left of the motherboard. Bear in mind, all of these power connectors go in one way, so if it's not fitting, flip the connector around. Next up is the 24 pin power connector. Put on that cable extender and then route it through this middle cutout right here. And this will plug into this header on the middle-ish right section of the motherboard. It's always a little tough to plug this one in, you'll just have to apply even pressure until it clicks into place. Now we're going to do the front panel cables, which are the cables coming out of the front panel of the case. First up this audio connector, route it through this cutout, and plug it into the very bottom left header. Next, the USB 3.0 cable, 
put it through the middle cutout right here, and plug it into the connector right below the 24 pin cable. Next, the USB-C cable, route it through that same exact middle cutout, and plug it into the connector right below the USB 3.0 cable. And now for everyone's favorite cables, the front panel connectors. Route them through this bottom left cutout right here, and using this as your guide, plug them into their dedicated spots. Now if you're feeling lazy, you really only need to plug in the power switch and reset switch, and the best part about those two is it doesn't matter which orientation they go in. Now let's install the back fan. To keep the design scheme consistent, I went with the Thermaltake Tough Fan 12s. And yes, they do come with those screws. Make sure you install the fan in that exact orientation and then route its cable to the other side of the case. Now let's direct our attention to the Thermaltake Tough Liquid Ultra 240 AIO. This is a really awesome and effective AIO with a pretty cool screen as you probably saw in the intro. And it's using the Thermaltake Tough Fans. Using these screws, let's install them onto the radiator. And do take note of how I install them, you want them on this side with the little golden bit in the middle facing upwards. Now we gotta deal with that mess of cables. Coming out of those two fans will be these four pin connectors. You're going to want to connect them to this two to one adapter, which comes with the AIO. With that done, we can install the AIO into the case. First though, make sure you route all the cables to the back. Now, for some reason, the footage got corrupted, but these screw holes right here are where you screw in the AIO using this type of screw. Grab this bracket out of the AIO box and then slide it onto the pump. Also, don't forget to take the sticker off the bottom. Grab some thermal paste, the stuff that came with the AIO will do, and apply a pea-sized amount on the middle of the CPU. Put the pump onto the CPU in this orientation, and then fasten it using these spring-loaded screws. Screw each one in a little bit at a time. Don't screw one in all the way, and then the next one all the way, and so on. Now let's get those intake fans installed. We'll be using the Thermaltake Tough Fan 12s for this as well, and we'll be using the same type of screws we use to install the exhaust fan. Now, little disclaimer, I'm kind of an idiot. I should have plugged these cables in before I put the AIO into the case. Anyway, that two to one adapter that was coming out of the AIO fans gets plugged into the header labeled CPU fan, and the one coming out of the pump goes into pump fan. And now for everyone's favorite part, the graphics card, I chose the RTX 3080. It can be any 3080 you'd like, but I chose this Zotac version in specific because it's pretty reliable and it matches my color scheme. And of course, don't forget to plug in your PCIe power cables. I don't know why, but that's the one mistake I always make. Now at this point, you probably have a huge mess of cables on the back side of the case. Round up all the four pin connectors coming out of the fans and then get these adapters, which you can find in the tough fan boxes. Plug the fan cables into the adapters. It doesn't matter which one goes into which. And then route the ends of these adapters into the bottom middle cutout where you'll plug them into the headers labeled system fan. Last but not least, we have to make sure we can control the pump screen. So grab this cable right here, which is in the AIO box, plug the micro USB end into the pump and the other end into the header labeled JUSB. And with that, your PC is officially finished and is ready for Windows. To install Windows, you'll want to get a USB drive that is at least eight gigabytes in size and plug it into another USB device. On that computer, head over to Google, type in Windows 10 ISO, and click the first Microsoft.com link that comes up. You can also find the link to this in my description. Scroll down a tiny bit and click Download Tool Now. When that's downloaded, go ahead and run it. It'll load a little bit, then it'll take you to this page, click Accept, then it'll load a little bit more, and you'll want to click Create Installation Media and click Next. Ensure that it's your language of preference, Windows 10, 64-bit, and click USB flash drive, then click Next. Click Next again. And then it'll take a decent bit to install Windows 10 onto this drive. So while that's loading, relax, eat some snacks. When that finishes, plug it into the new PC and boot it up. It will then take you to this screen. Verify that all the info is correct, and then click Next. Then click, yep, you guessed it, install now. 
Click I don't have a product key, we'll put that in later. Then click Windows 10 Home or Pro, then click Next. Then read the applicable notices and license terms at least four times over, maybe five, click I accept, and then click Next. And you're gonna select Custom Install Windows Only, ensure that your SSD is selected, then click Next, and now it will officially actually install Windows. Should take less than five minutes, then it'll take you to the setup. I don't think I need to walk you guys through this one. And then when you're done with the setup process, it's time to activate Windows. Head over to cdkeystash.com or Digital Chill Mart, whichever one has Windows in stock. Select Windows 10 Home or Pro, whichever you selected when you were setting up Windows. And then you can use my coupon code RUTEC so you can get a discount at checkout. They give you the activation code immediately upon purchase. So now head to the search bar, search activation settings, and then go to change or enter product key. This is where you'll enter the product key you received from the website. And now that Windows is activated, let's turn on XMP, which will make sure our RAM is running at the proper speed. Boot up the PC, spam the delete key, and it'll take you to this screen. Next, click this button on the left to activate XMP, then go to save and exit and click yes. And lastly, for the drivers, I will have the links to all of the necessary drivers in my description. Just download them, run them, and then you'll be set. And last but certainly not least, we have the benchmarks. So for this segment of the video, I'll play some music, no commentary, and let you see how this PC performs in various games. I'll see you in the outro. And that'll wrap it up for today's tutorial video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below or join my Discord, a link will be in the pinned comment. And of course, if you enjoy the content you're seeing, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Thanks for watching, peace out.